Hi everybody, so today we're gonna to be looking at how the thyroid hormone affects different target organs. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is, this is a, basically a cross section of the heart. So this would be my right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, that's right here. The red is going to be my endocardium. The brown you see is going to be my myocardium. And then this really thin outer layer of purple, that is going to be my epicardium. So if we look real fast, this is what's going to happen is when you have a thyroid hormone, what it's going to do is it's going to go to my myocardium that's right here. And what it's going to do is it's going to enter into cells. So I'm going to go like this. I'm just going to draw a muscle cell. All right, there's my muscle cell, my cardiac muscle cell. And I, I'm not gonna put the nuclei and all that in there. But anyways, so it's going to come in, right? So we're gonna have our T3 and our T3 is going to enter into here. Now T4 can do this too, but as we know, usually it's T3, that's the most active form, right? T4 is pretty much inactive. And then once it comes inside here, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the DNA, right? So my T3 is gonna come down to the thyroid hormone receptor and it's going to come into the DNA and it's gonna cause the DNA to make messenger RNA. And then the messenger RNA, what that's going to do is it's gonna to go to the ribosome and we are gonna end up with something that we call a beta adrenergic receptor. So we're gonna end up with a B1, a beta, adrenergic, receptor. Okay, so now what do beta adrenergic receptors do? They're going to bind something called catecholamines. All right, so catecholamines are going to be things such as epinephrine and norepinephrine. So now when this happens, when these happen, so let's go ahead and say this is my catecholamine right here. This is going to be my, this could be epinephrine, norepinephrine. That's going to bind onto there. And what that's going to do is a number of different things. It is going to basically increase the heart contractility, right? So it's gonna increase the force that the heart contracts with. So it's gonna increase the contractility of the heart, right? So there we, it's gonna increase the force that it does. It's also going to play a role in increasing the heart rate. Or let's go, before we get there, it's gonna increase the blood pressure. Let's just say it's going to increase the blood pressure. I don't want to give you high blood pressure. If you have too high or too low of thyroid hormone, you can actually get an increase in, in blood pressure. But let's take a look at something else. Up here in my right atrium, if you recall, we have something that we call the SA node. And the SA node, the SA node is going to be the pacemaker of the heart, the sinoatrial node, right? And it's the pacemaker of our heart. So here's what's going to happen, is the same thing that we saw here, we're gonna have happen here. So my T3 is going to come in, it's gonna go into there, and it's going to put more of those beta-1 adrenergic receptors on here. So there's my B1 AR receptor. And then what's gonna happen, let me put it just like this, and then what's gonna happen is I am gonna get my catecholamines binding onto here, and now what that's going to do is that is going to increase the heart rate, okay? That's going to increase my heart rate, also known as my pulse, right? That's what's going to happen there. The other thing that this is going to do in the cardiovascular system, it, it is going to open up my blood vessels. So we're going to get an increase in, in blood vessels, which we call vasodilation, okay? So let's take a look at what's going to happen on the skin. So I'm just going to draw... Really quick, we're just gonna say this is my skin here, right? I'm not gonna draw all the layers of the skin, but this is my skin. And then inside the skin, as we know, we are going to have, we are gonna have something called sweat gland. So I'm gonna draw my sweat gland and here's another sweat gland, right? And, and there's my sweat gland. So now, here's what's going to happen is in the skin, we are going to have our blood vessels. So here's a blood vessel, right? This is going to be basically an artery right here, or it's gonna be a blood vessel, right? And there's one right there. So now what's gonna happen is my T3 
is going to cause vasodilation. So you see how small this is right here? What it's going to do, especially in times when you're hot, it's going to increase the size of that blood vessel. And like we said, that's called vasodilation. And so it's going to increase it. So now my blood vessel has become bigger. Now you might've seen this on people's faces before when they're hot and what happens? Their face turns red, right? Well, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna have more blood coming through here and because blood is gonna have heat in it, we're actually gonna get heat coming out of here, right? We're actually gonna get heat coming out of here. Now, the thing that's gonna happen is when we have heat and we have these sweat glands right here, right? When we have these sweat glands, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cause these to produce sweat and the sweat's gonna come out on <clears throat> our skin and then when the wind comes by or air comes by, it's gonna carry that away. And when it carries that away, it carries the heat away. The other thing that my T3 is going to do is it's going to go and make more of these catecholamine receptors on these uh, sweat glands. So that's how, that's how thyroid hormone is going to affect your cardiovascular system. Okay, and that's it for how the Thyroid hormone affects the cardiovascular system. If you like the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. And thank you so much for watching.